Tonight, Twitter gets even more like Facebook. Tumblr starts analyzing images for brands and Google's plans for attracting kids as customers. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 153 for Monday, August 18th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all of your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Is Twitter becoming more like Facebook? Oh, the horror. Uh, a new feature began rolling out to some users several weeks ago and shows favorited tweets from accounts you follow, similar to how Facebook reorders a liked update. A tweet favorited by others will show up in your timeline. This disrupts the fundamental nature of Twitter for some, which displays unfiltered tweets chronologically. Many people have used favorite as a bookmark or a way of saying thanks for a tweet. And Twitter veterans don't seem to like this new update and a quick search will show droves of complaints. Perhaps this is a way to help keep uh, new users seeing the content that might be more interesting or relevant to them. We'll see if the company rolls this out to all users or if they'll scrap the idea altogether. Now, starting this week, the Yahoo-owned Tumblr will begin analyzing the hundreds of millions of photos posted every day for brand-related data. According to Mashable, this doesn't mean that if you post a selfie with a Coke bottle in the background, you'll start seeing ads for Coke. This data will be available to advertisers so they can see how users are interacting or what is being said about their products. T.R. Newcomb, the head of business development at Tumblr, says... Right now, we're not planning to do anything ad-related. It looks like Tumblr and Yahoo are the first major online entities to try and analyze visual content for data. And it wouldn't be a show without some speculation related to the new iPhone. A schematic uh, that was leaked to Geek Bar on Weibo.com shows the character's PN65V, which happens to be the same model number for a near-field communication chip made by the NXP Corporation, the same company that makes the M7 coprocessor, which debuted in the iPhone 5S. NFC chips are absent from all iPhones, and it's been a persistent rumor that the new device might have one. And one more point about all of this, there is no direct correlation between this schematic diagram and the iPhone, Apple, or Foxconn. So for now, you'll just have to wait until September 9th to see for yourself. And today, the Obama administration said it wants all new cars to be able to talk to each other. Known as vehicle-to-vehicle, -vehicle, or V2V, the technology uses wireless signals to transmit speed, position, and other information to cars and trucks in the vicinity. The hope here is to prevent nearly 600,000 crashes and over 1,000 deaths annually. Cars with this system installed could warn drivers or automatically make adjustments to prevent or lessen accidents. Officials in the Obama administration said they're working on submitting a formal proposal next year, but it is not known yet when or if these systems will be mandatory. Now, coming up from the creator of Flappy Bird comes an equally addictive new game, but this time it's vertical. And next I'll chat with uh, Alex Wilhelm of TechCrunch about how Google could build out their services for children. But before that, well, let's thank our sponsor. Managing your money can be a challenge. There is a free and secure tool to help you do that called Personal Capital. It solves two barriers to growing your wealth. First barrier, of course, is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all that stuff, all in different sites with different usernames, different passwords. And the second is that you pay someone to manage it and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, your phone, your tablet, with real-time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital has an award-winning watch app uh, that you can download in Google Play that seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances whenever and wherever they need it. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and, transparent, and transparency to make better investment decisions right away.
To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me now is Alex Wilhelm, a writer for TechCrunch and a frequent uh, guest on the show. It's good to have you back, sir. It's great to be back. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday. Yeah. Oh. Say with a frown. It's been rough. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, today, the information published an exclusive. Uh, they called it uh, Google Seeking New Customers, Kids. And according to the article, Google's looking for ways to legally allow children to sign up for its services. So, first of all, what currently prevents a company like Google from offering their online services to kids? And what kind of restrictions are they required to adhere to at this point? Yeah, there's a law, COPPA. It means you can't really have users that are under the age of 13. Um, that's the, the the long and the short of it. There's a lot of regulations around what data you can collect, how you can use it, and that sort of thing. So most companies choose to not allow users at all under the age of 13 to not kind of go against these rules. Path mm -hmm. famously to pay an $800,000 FTC fine for having about 3,000 under 13 users on the service. Um, and so it's a big deal. I mean, you can get stopped pretty hard for this if you're found to be kind of an abrogation of law. Sure. Now, what kind of services are, is Google looking to give kids direct access to? What do they What do they have to gain from that? Well, I think one of the ideas is to build a YouTube service that kids can use, make it safer, mm -hmm. kind of maybe restrict the content that's there. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube that's technically not porn, but it's still pretty salacious. So I think you'd want to cut out some of that, maybe some profane music. I don't know. I'm not a parent, so I can't really comment. But I think Google would like to be able to broaden out its services and bring more people on early to its uh, to its products. I mean, they may not want to directly monetize these kids when they're 12, but they want to monetize, you know, have them on the service for 14, 18, 20 years. And so it matters to get them on early. So anything you might use in your 18, they probably want you to use in your 12. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's true. And it's yeah. hard to get, get them used to the uh, the habit early, I suppose. Although, you know, all kids these days are using Google for something. But the other services, you're yes. right. Now, I am a parent. And I do have, you know, a, a four and a half year old daughter that when she gets a hold of my phone, she knows how to launch into the YouTube app. And usually mm -hmm. she can find her pretty little cute, you know, cartoons. But every once in a while you walk in, you're like, wait a minute, what are you watching right now? It would be great to to siphon that out. Would yeah. would that kind of uh, access bring with it any other potential problems with other services? Or is Google just kind of looking to target like specific services like YouTube or just open it up across the board? I think they probably want to do it on a very targeted basis. You don't really need to have AdWords for kids, right? <laughs> no, no, no 12 year olds like, you know what, I really want to have this ad platform at my service. <laughs> I, I think that it's more the consumer facing stuff. Maybe yeah. Docs, maybe Gmail, maybe... Um, if you think back, Google Buzz would have been great. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, these are you know just the more social, consumer-facing services. But I mean, think about it this way. The more they allow kids to use, even if they pull it off legally, the more challenges they face. So it could become a very targeted set of, of services and applications, maybe a bundle, say, um, that has specific opt-in capabilities so parents could still be in charge in some way uh, that could broaden this out. I mean, Google is desperate to get more users to grow its long-term cash flows. And if kids are the next front on that, you know, they probably want to win first. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a public company is just trying to uh, continue to grow more and more. That's a, a huge, huge pool of, of untapped users, basically. Now, how have other tech giants, you know, Facebook, Yahoo, other companies uh, tried to enroll children into using their services? And have they done something similar? Well, I believe Yahoo has had something similar for a long time. It's incredibly unpopular. Mm -hmm. uh, companies like Facebook, I think, just say, set your age. And if you're, if you put it under 12 or 13, they say you can't join. But if you say that you're 65, they can't really, you know, look through your screen and tell you that you're lying. Right. So I feel like, and there's some legal protection for people that lie to services and so forth. But I think that this is kind of unbroken ground on a larger scale. So if Google does pull this off, we could see kind of a stampede of companies looking to replicate and follow in its footsteps. But it's a lot of ifs. We don't know what this will look like, if it will pass the FTC, you know, purview, uh, how broad it will be. It could be very targeted across one product, say. And, and you know, Microsoft doesn't have a YouTube competitor, so if it only right. gets there, it won't be much of an industry thing. But Google's huge, and they're aggressive. And so if they can pull this off, you know, I think they could be a leader, and we can see, you know, a really decent following. Yeah, that would be a big deal. Uh, Alex Wilhelm, appreciate you joining us once again. Uh, where can Always, people sir. find your awesome work online? Uh, the glorious techcrunch.com, or if you're on the Twitter, I'm just Alex on Twitter. Excellent. Thank you again, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All righty. And finally, if you were crazy about uh, Flappy Bird, the low-scoring, high-popular app, get ready. Doug Nguyen, the creator of the app, has a new one. This time it's vertical, swing copters.
utilizes a similar concept with the tap-powered copter guy moving up the screen through various articles. It really is like a vertical uh, Flappy Bird. Uh, and to add to the fun, this game has swinging hammers on each gate. Swing Copters is scheduled for release on Thursday the 21st. It'll be free uh, with a 99-cent ad-free uh, version. So I suppose look for that if you want to get really frustrated and uh, throw your phone on the ground and destroy it. Uh, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. I'm only speaking from experience, of course. Uh, subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.